Hey everybody, welcome. Welcome to our morning prayer. I'm just here a few minutes early, so you know that I'm here and you can grab your liturgy. So, um, I will talk again <laughs> when the bombs go and it's nine o'clock. Morning Paul and Christine, morning Sue. Morning Sue. Morning, Lynn. Morning, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our morning prayer on this Friday morning. Perhaps you'd like to grab your liturgy and uh, we will say... Uh, our responses together. One thing I've asked the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen, Christ have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Our readings today are from Jeremiah and from the Gospel of John. Jeremiah is hard. It's uh, chapter 22, verse 20, going all the way through to chapter 23, verse 8. So we start off with uh, a judgment from God upon the nation and especially upon the leaders before Jeremiah turns to the hope. Hope for the future, which, as we know, is revealed in Christ. And then we have an appropriate response. If, if Jeremiah is complaining that the people and the leaders don't respond to God appropriately, they seek to use God, um, they seek to abandon God, um, here we have this amazing picture of Mary and her appropriate, her right response to Jesus, her act of worship. Jeremiah 22, starting at verse 20. Weep for your allies in Lebanon, shout, shout for them in Bashan, search for them in the regions east of the river. See, they, all just, they are all destroyed. No one is left to help you. I warned you when you were prosperous, but you replied, don't bother me. You have been that way since childhood. You simply will not obey me. And now the wind will blow away your allies. All your friends will be taken as captives. Surely 
then you will see your wickedness and be ashamed. It may be nice to live in a beautiful palace, panelled with wood from the cedars of Lebanon, but soon you will grow with pangs of anguish, anguish like a woman in labour. Surely as I live, says the Lord, I will abandon you, Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Even if you were the signet ring on my right hand, I would pull you off. I will hand you over to those who seek to kill you, those you so desperately fear, to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and the mighty Babylonian army. I will expel you and your mother from this land, and you will die in a foreign country, not in your native land. You will never again return to the land you yearn for. Why is this man Jehoiachin like a discarded, broken jar? Why are he and his children to be exiled to a foreign land? O oh, earth, 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 listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Let the record show that this man, Jehoiachin, was childless. He was a failure, for none of his children will succeed him on the throne of David to rule over Judah. What sorrow awaits the leaders of my people, the shepherds of my sheep, for they have destroyed and scattered the very ones they were expected to care for, says the Lord. Therefore this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to these shepherds. Instead of caring for my flock and leading them to safety, you deserted them and driven them to destruction. Now I pour out my judgment on you for the evil you have done to them. But I will gather together the remnant of my flock from the countries where I have driven them. I will bring them back to their own sheepfold. And they will be fruitful and increase in number. Then I will appoint responsible shepherds who will care for them. And they will never be afraid again. Not a single one will be lost or missing. I, the Lord, have spoken. For the time is coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous descendant from, the, from, David, from King David's line. He will be a king who rules with wisdom. He will do what is just and right throughout the land. And this will be his name. The Lord is our righteousness. In that day Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. In that day, says the Lord, when people are taking an oath, they will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives, who rescued the people of Israel from the land of Egypt. Instead, they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the people of Israel back to their own land, from the land of the north and from all the countries to which he exiled them then they will live in their own land. And now, John chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived at Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honour. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, That perfume was worth a year's wages. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some from himself. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and to also see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. But the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him that many people had deserted them and believed in Jesus. Obedience and worship. How do we worship God? Not how do we use God to make our lives better. How do we worship God? For it could be seen that um, Mary's use of that perfume was a waste. That's certainly what Judas thought, although he had his own motives. But it wasn't. God accepted it. What can we do today to worship God? 
So what's happening with your day today? What things are you looking forward to? What things are you worried about? Let's just take a moment to give our burdens, our requests, our concerns to our loving Heavenly Father. Father, we know it's all about heart. For where the heart is, everything else will follow. And we thank you for Mary's heart, that she was just so blown away by you that she gave the most precious thing that she had as an act of worship. For those who don't believe, it is seen as a waste. But for those who do believe, and you yourself called it precious and beautiful, and what she should have done. So would you help us in our lives to worship you? And Father, we give you our concerns and pray that you may work, pray that you may work through us, that we may indeed be the answers to our own prayers. Father, we commend our burdens to you and we pray now that you would fill us with your peace. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So should we have our hymn, our canticle? Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. So blessings upon you everyone. Uh, I pray that you may uh, uh, know God's presence with you as you walk today. If you'd like to come and meet us on Sunday, again as you know services are at 9 and 11 o'clock. We're celebrating Palm Sunday uh, this Sunday. So uh, sadly, we can't give out the crosses <laughs> because we're not allowed to give stuff out during this, these restrictions. But uh, come along and celebrate. Also, I just want to let you know what we're going to do on Good Friday. Um, there's a whole load of stuff happening. We'll have our Monday Thursday service in the evening at seven. But on Good Friday, uh, we're going to do uh, the church is going to be open at 10 to 12 um, as an act of acknowledging our grief acknowledging our distress in the context of Christ's distress. Um, and so you may have seen on the, uh, was it was yesterday, that they had this amazing time to stop. Well, we're going to do something similar on Good Friday. And on our railings outside, an opportunity to, um, to put a ribbon outside the church. And inside, there's uh, going to be some amazing um, places where you can stop and think and reflect. And this is going to help me do those. And then we're going to have a time to light a candle as an act of praying, uh, maybe for a situation or for somebody that you know has been particularly affected. So that's what's happening on Good Friday. And then again on Easter Sunday morning, it's going to be our normal services at 9 and at 11. Blessings upon you, everybody. Keep safe. And if I can do anything at all, just be in touch. I'd love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, come to me blessing. <laughs> May the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, everyone. God bless. Bye-bye.